guys, my name is Yuko and welcome to Unleash Your Inner Soul, where we talk about holistic healing tips from mind, body and spirit that can bring calm and chill to your life. So today I'm joined with Matthew Israeli son and he's going to be my guest and we're going to talk about the importance of breathing and the benefits that it gives. And Matthew is a breathing meditation coach in Vancouver and he developed an app on four different types of breathing styles. So stick around and he's going to give you some tips on helping to clear mind chatter and how to keep calm during these times. So, yeah. hey, Matthew. There you go. <laughs> so tell me about breath work and what you're doing. Yeah, well, I'm not actually a breath work coach or I'm not okay. actually certi certified. I like to make that distinction. Um, Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, um, because I do respect my teachers a lot and people who have, um, you know, kind of studied that and done that for years and feel yeah. kind of called to that. Um, so I try to be clear when people, um, so, so obviously during this time we're in, um, you know, if you're listening to this in the, from the future, this, this, <laughs> this is quarantine time. So everybody's inside, right? Um, mm -hmm. And so I've decided to just start doing um, uh, breath work in the morning. Um, uh, so I created a, a breathing app um, and that, that launched this year. I'll get into that more. <laughs> Let me just finish this story. Um, but yeah, it's like, oh, everyone's inside. This is kind of something I've been doing on my own. Maybe I'll just start doing it live. Um, and so that's sort of, what, you know, something that came out of this um, quarantine time was was just like, oh, maybe I'll just do live. I'll just go live and do my breathing every day. Um, but I do like to say I'm not, uh, I'm not certified as a breathwork coach or I, and, and I don't really necessarily feel called to be a breathwork instructor. I'm just someone who loves to breathe. I just fell in love with breath and created an app. I'm an app developer who loves to breathe. And so I, the way I approach it is that yeah, I mean, the app is called Just Breathing. And so yeah. when we do our kind of breathing together, that, that's really all it is. We're just, we're just taking time to, to, to breathe. And I'm bringing whatever I can. I mean, people say that I am an instructor, but I'm not an instructor. Like, I, 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 rely, I rely on the professionals. Um, and um, yeah, I have a lot of respect for my teachers. Because through your app, you're, you're teaching, you're sharing. And you're yeah, no, absolutely. Absolutely. So it's not that it's not that I'm not sharing what I know mm -hmm. and what I've experienced. I'm totally down for that. Um, but yeah, no, I don't have any, I haven't done like any, um, you know, work. Well, I guess I have done workshops and I have done lots of training in breath work, but I'm not, you know, um, okay. I don't, I don't, I don't self identify as a breath work. I see. Okay. A breath work coach. <laughs> yeah. Well, tell me about the, because on your app, there's four different breathing techniques that you yeah. share. Yeah. If you could share what those four are and what are the differences and benefits of the four? Sure. Yeah. So the app is called Just Breathing. And so the approach was, I wanted to create something that was really approachable, um, really simple and really practical. Um, so it's probably the least complicated app that you'll ever find, like other than the calculator that's on your phone. Like it's basically that, like you open it up and you press play and then you just start breathing. It's, it's very simple. Um, there's no kind of complex like user sign up, you know, you don't have to have an account or anything like that. It's really just a tool to drop in and, and connect to your breath and connect to your body. Um, I fell in love with yoga probably about six years ago. Um, I'd been practicing a little bit before then, but um, that was when I really started to seriously practice. Um, and I started out in Montreal at a studio that was kind of more Hatha based, more very much physiology based, um, which gave a great foundation, meditation based as well. Um, it's called Nada Yoga. If anyone's ever in Montreal and wants to go to a good studio, I would recommend it. Um, yeah, and then moved here, started going to one yoga because it was down the street from where I was um, going to school to be to, to learn like programming and coding and web development. Um, so it was sort of like, um, what, is, what is it called? 
a symmetry or a, a, a thing that kind of happens through chance almost um, to find this studio. And, and yeah, so I've been practicing there for the last five years. Um, and uh, that's really where I fell more deeply in love with breathwork and pranayama, which is the breathwork tradition um, that comes out of the yogic tradition. Um, and so when I wanted to go deeper into breathwork practice, um, I didn't really find anything out there that was kind of speaking to me or speaking to my, my community and my needs. There was a lot of meditation apps. Um, some of them had kind of like a breath, a breathwork section, but it was like buried deep within the app and it wasn't the main focus. Um, I'm not sure if you've used the Calm app. Um, it has a little breathwork thing in it, which I loved, but it, it was like very much a second. It didn't seem like it was important to the app at all. Like it was, you could, it was hard to find. Um, and so I'm like, oh, this is really cool. I want something like this, but I want something that is more, I guess, yogic based or more speaking to my community that's mm -hmm. coming from this tradition. And um, yeah, a, a lot of the other breathwork apps, I just didn't find to be that inspiring. So, you know, as these things go, it's sort of like, well, I'll build it myself. Amazing. Um, and so where the exercises come from, it, it it's coming from the, the yogic tradition. So I was trying to build something sort of for... I mean, almost in homage to my teachers in a lot of ways, like mm -hmm. the inspiration that I got from the teachers at One Yoga, like Mara Branscombe, Peter Almas, Carolyn Ann Budgel, um, and, and many, many others, Ryan Lair, obviously, um, where, you know, breathwork is a serious part, or pranayama is a, is a very serious part of that tradition. Um, and so honoring that tradition was kind of something that I wanted to have included. So it starts off with just what I call a balanced breathing, um, which is an equal inhale, equal exhale. That's kind of the first thing you arrive at. Obviously that's the simplest kind of type of breathing, right? It's just breathe in, breathe out, and we wanna create equality, equality within the body, equality within the being. So that one is like the more, pro that one's like the casting the net wide for anybody who isn't maybe um, so much into yoga or meditation or anything, but they heard about breath work and maybe someone recommended my app that would be for them or your parents or you know people who are who are coming to this for the first time like anybody can do that breathing and it's so that I, I wanted to make the first sort of thing that you see on the app or the first breathwork thing that you do very approachable so that's a balanced breathing um i guess it could technically be called sama vritti which means sama is equal and vritti is like effort mm -hmm. so a balanced breath where you're breathing in and out for the same length of time um, definitely does have yogic a, a tradition, like a, a pranayama tradition, but I just decided to call it balanced breath or the just breathing breath. Um, and so you start off at like a five second inhale, five second exhale, and then you can choose, there's a little slider where you can choose basically to go up or down from that. Um, so you can go all the way up to a nine second inhale, nine second exhale. Um, so that's sort of like the basic breath. That's, that's for, you know, if you're just coming to breath work, I would, or if you just need to have like three minutes of deep breaths, that's like your go-to. And then the what other are the three, benefits of doing, so are you wanting people to work up to the nine seconds or where would somebody start if they were just starting breath work? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, where we start you at, like when you, when you first kind of open the app and, and start breathing, it's a five second inhale, five second exhale. So that's sort of, um, I guess, middle of the road, or that would be a really great place to start because most people can do a five second inhale, five second exhale. Um, it's also, there's a lot of research around that length of breath as well. Um, there have been a lot of studies that have come out Specifically, it got a lot of attention because it was found that that is the natural breathing pattern that monks fall into when they're doing chanting, mm. when they're chanting Om Mane Padme Om, or doing any sort of group chanting. That's, oh, they just naturally sink into a five second inhale, five second exhale. Um, and it's also what, um, like, people who are chanting the rosary will do that as well. So it sort of kind of had this 
oh, this is like a, a bit of a holy breath or something mm -hmm. like that. Um, or this is just what you do when you're, when you're chanting. So um, yeah, people or some of the research sort of had that as like the ideal length of breath. Mm -hmm. um, it's also been called like an integrated breath. A lot of breath work instructors and teachers recommend that um, if you need to kind of connect back to your body. So that's a really good one. If anyone's experiencing like any anxiety emotions or um, maybe panic emotions or just basic nervousness, um, that's a really good one to just reintegrate uh, and, and recenter yourself into your body. So that's sort of where you start off. Um, I would say, yes, you can work up to um, nine second inhale, nine second exhale. It's, it's really, um, there's not a lot of instructions on the app. So it's, it's, it's really like up to you right. to take your own journey and to experiment and explore. Um, I'm really about people having their own experiences and making their own discoveries um i what know what the benefits I found. Of being going up to nine seconds be um so the app is meant to exercise your lungs that's part of the kind of function of it so as we take longer inhales um and we slow down our rate of breath um we're learning to control those muscles that are involved in respiration um, at a different weight. It's like lifting weights. If you're like pumping super hard, that's one thing. You're training um, a different type of muscle. You're training a muscle that's going to be more explosive, mm -hmm. right? Like a lot of people do like fast twitch. I'm not a trainer. I don't, I don't really train <laughs> other than doing yoga, but you know, I, I do know that people do like fast twitch training, right? Where they're trying to get their muscles to be very responsive. Mm -hmm. um, but then there's also benefits to doing like a, a curl or something very slowly, like slow and controlled um, and, and lengthening that, that repetition. Um, that's going to build a different type of muscle, right? That's going to build more endurance and more strength. Mm -hmm. So if you think of it like that, when you do a longer inhale, um, you're training your diaphragm to just um, you're, you're building it in the endurance and the strength of that. Um, so there's many benefits. Um, yeah, just, but just slowing down, slowing down your inhale and exhale to nine seconds. Um, the sort of the longer you breathe, the more into a parasympathetic or a relaxed state you're going to be. That's basically it. Would you say there's an ideal sitting position or laying down position? Would you have your eyes opened or closed? Or do you have any instruction around what you do personally or what you recommend yeah. people do in your app? Yeah, I mean, what I do is I sit on my knees on a book, like with a book in between my seat and my ankles, basically. Mm -hmm. um, because I can't sit cross-legged. <laughs> I can't sit in full lotus. It's very uncomfortable for me. Um, so I would say- You want to be comfortable. You don't want to- yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can be sitting in a chair. You can be sitting like- you know, whatever your body permits you to be in, mm -hmm. to, to be able to sit for um, some period of time, five minutes, 10 minutes, 15 minutes, you don't want to have your legs falling asleep and you don't want to, you don't want there to be any pain. Um, like I just sat for 45 minutes in the position I just described. And I mean, I guess I've been doing it every day now for a while, but you know, it's, it, it's not painful. It like the yeah. knee, you know, gets a little bit stiff. Obviously, if you're sitting like that for an extended period of time in any position, you're going to get a little stiffness or soreness, sure. but it's not painful. Um, I you love can be that. It's giving you like, the permission to. to yeah. Healthy. It doesn't have to yeah. look perfect, whatever that is. Yeah. Be in whatever position. Like, I guess that's where the experimentation comes in. Mm. Everybody should experiment with what makes them feel how they feel like breathing is really just about how you feel. Um, so you may be sitting up and you may be doing some breathing exercises and then you might feel like lying down. <laughs> I would say there's, you know, um, you just want to be comfortable. I love that. Just listening to your, listening to your body. 
Yeah. yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And there were some, there were a couple of other uh, types of breath exercises that you right. use in your app. Would you like to talk about those? Yeah, absolutely. So um, people, there, there have been some like questions sort of through the Instagram live where people are like, are these more advanced techniques or, right. you know, how, how does this all work? Um, and they definitely are more advanced techniques. Um, but I still think that they can be practiced by anybody like, um, I don't think you have to, you know, reach a certain level of, of Zen or breathing sure. or whatever to, to do them. Um, but you should be always mindful and always listening to any signals that you're getting from your body. Um, so the other three, um, there's Samavriti, which is, um, well, equal effort. But the way I was taught is it's an, an inhale, a hold and an exhale and a hold. So it's, it's like a box breathing. Uh, some people call it in the West, they call it box breathing. It's also called Navy seal breathing. It's the Navy seals train that, that style of breath before they go into combat um, because um, it's very calming for your nervous system. Um, however, for people who maybe have a lot of, I don't know, maybe trauma that they're holding in their body or just emotions, sometimes doing breath, like holding the breath can be very stressful or cannot be calming, I guess, um, or it can just seem unsafe. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't approach that one right away if you're um, dealing with anything like that. Um, but at the same time, I wouldn't say don't try it. I would say try it. And, and if you have anything where you're just, where it's causing anxiety, then maybe just let it go. However, um, it might be something that you just need to breathe through. A lot of times we need to breathe through these things yeah. that these feelings come up and actually breathing through them is going to help. Um, so Samavriti is really good. I find it's the most effective to, if you're having like excessive mind chatter or you're having excessive thoughts, um, be them positive or negative or just whatever it is, mm -hmm. that one like snaps you into your body and into your present moment so quickly because, and it builds a lot of patience within just your mind and your body mm -hmm. because you're, you're, you're breathing in say for seven seconds and then you're holding for seven seconds and then you're exhaling for seven seconds and then you're holding for seven seconds. So there's like 21 seconds where you're not getting any more <laughs> breath and then you're breathing in. And so that whole time you're waiting for that next breath or that next kind of bit of oxygen, um, you're, bi you're building so much patience, mm -hmm. and, but you're also like just um, like snapped into your body in such a way, like, like there's no kind of escaping it. I don't know. I find it very effective um, for like creating focus and creating, you know, like any, anything where you're thinking about, anxieties about the future or you're looping through the past like that one will there's no other choice but to be there with your body in that moment and this is great because um, you can do this anywhere you can do it anywhere anytime which is the wonderful thing about breath work and yeah. the breath and these practices is they will be with you until the day you die <laughs> so we should <laughs> right until you take your last breath you're always going to be breathing yeah. um and there's always the, and the breath has such an amazing effect on the body. It's the one thing that we have, we always have direct conscious control over if we're conscious, yeah. um, if we're, you know, awake and not in some other state. Um, our breath is always there for us. And it has the ability to drastically alter our physiology. So, uh, you know, we can talk more about the science and physiology later, but basically doing um, like slowing your breath rate down, for example, to like seven seconds, inhale, seven second, exhale. When you do that, um, you have something called a vagal tone, which is your vagus nerve, your longest nerve in your body, which innervates all your internal organs. Um, and it has uh, direct receptors on the, on the lungs, the stretch receptors. When you, when you do that lengthening breath, you're um, tuning your vagal tone to a slightly higher rate, which um, slows your heart rate down. Um, so it, it's your breath is directly responsible for controlling a lot of um, 
the processes in the body. Yeah. So we can, that's the one thing that we have conscious control over, right? We can't, you can't necessarily beat your heart, but you can consciously control your lungs, which can then slow your heart rate, which can then put you into a more parasympathetic state, which can then, you know, affect your digestion and, and all these things. So the breath is really like the key, the doorway, the, 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 the back door, the hack into, um, a lot of the breath is the hack right yeah a lot of the systems of the body yeah yeah Mm -hmm. then you have the kapati and then the brahmi yeah so kapalabhati is um yeah so i i just did a workshop yesterday on on pranayama and we did this yeah and so i'm i'm that's kind of looping through my mind sort of trying Mm -hmm. to to crystallize some of what was said there um, but I'll just say what I know. So this is, um, it comes from uh, sort of tantric, more tantric tradition. Um, it's a belly pumping breath. It's uh, known as the bellows breath. It has many names. It's known as the bellows breath or the breath of fire. Um, the literal translation is shining skull. So yeah. skull shining breath, which is great. It's like such a lovely image. Um, yeah, it's beautiful. Um, and it's also known as the ego eradicator. Um, so yeah i I want people to know and be mindful or just approach maybe with not with caution but um yeah i mean this practice i guess you could say is a bit a bit advanced but i i feel like people can do it like i've done it with so many different people like i've done it with old people like everybody and and they're they don't have that much of an issue um um yeah but but i think there are some sort of things just to be mindful of like you know if you have maybe digestive issues or you're pregnant or things like that you probably don't want to practice this breath Mm um and yeah it can be humbling for a lot of people because it's it seems simple but it's not it's a belly pumping so you're kind of um snapping your belly button in and like forcefully exhaling out through your nose and then the inhale is passive so it's like you're kind of yeah um doing that um and you want to go for about 30 seconds and there's yeah so there's a couple there's like four different intensities on the app there's low medium uh what is it beginner low medium and high so those are just different lengths of kind of pulsing right um but yeah that one's is really good i like doing that one every day i think okay. i think you should do it every day every morning you should do and that, that one seems like a much more energizing breath yeah yeah so it creates kind of heat and fire within the body right Um, and it's sort of also i guess the the more advanced part is when you get into um more of the energy body and moving the energies around this one can be really powerful for that Um, so i guess yeah that's sort of what peter was talking about in the workshop yesterday is um you know when you get into some of these more advanced techniques it, it has to do more with the subtle energy body um Um, But yeah, so this one creates a lot of heat and a lot of energy, a lot of fire. Um, And I love doing like three rounds of this in the morning to kind of wake yourself up. Um, Yeah. And it's really good for your nasal, nasal cavity as well. Like um, it kind of clears, clears out all the stale air that gets kind of trapped in the bottom of, of the lungs, which is really important. That's where like the bacteria and the viruses kind of, they just stay there and you know they hide there in the in the bottom part of our lungs so we got to get those out i love yeah. that and is that the most intense um level that you have in breath work that you teach or that you share um i don't think there what do i want to say i don't think there's like a more intense or a less intense they're just different mm-hmm. yeah. they might be more intense for you Mm -hmm. Um, but for somebody else it might be something that they really enjoy um or it might seem less intense Mm -hmm. Um, yeah and the the last one that i have is uh the bromery which is bee's breath um which i love i really love this one this one's more playful um so traditionally you would like plug your ears and then you would hum but it's it's the end of the ohm so the ohm has three sounds Ah, oh, mm. Mm-hmm. And so the end is the mm, like the mm. 
So that's what we're doing in Brahmari breath, is we're doing the, the last part of the Om, basically. Um, and yeah, it's just a humming. It's basically you're, you're oming, um, but you're, just, you're kind of doing this internal vibration, uh, this internal hum. And the nice part about this is the app has um, different frequencies that you can select on the, at the top. Mm -hmm. So you can go through all the different chakras. So you can start at the crown chakra has like a higher frequency and then the third eye chakra and then the throat and then the heart and then the solar plexus and then low belly and then root chakra. Mm -hmm. So you can kind of, yeah. So the, the hums are of different frequencies. So the tones, as you know, I'm sure from, from bowls and singing bowls, mm -hmm. different frequencies resonate in different parts of our body. Um, so that was really fun to do like the sound design for that and to have all the different sound frequencies um, that you can. Yeah. So there's a lot of, you can have a lot of fun with that one. That is so awesome. I love that. I didn't see that part with the different uh, chakras and the different sounds. So that's really cool. Yeah. Yeah. Out. Yeah. Yeah. I, I like doing that one. We did that a bit this morning. Okay. Um, yeah. Uh, I guess that one is like, <laughs> a bit far out for people maybe like, or it can be like, what is this? Um, right. But hum, humming and, and sound in general is like the most healing for your body, I would say. So to have um, the combination of the two. Yeah. So just humming in general. And so, and this one too, um, you're exhaling for longer than you're inhaling. So most of the other ones like Kapala body is different because you're kind of belly pumping, but mm -hmm. all the other breathing exercises, it's mostly equal inhale to exhale, unless you're doing like the breath holding. Um, but this one, you're actually exhaling longer than you're inhaling. Um, and when we do that, we really um, get into kind of that calming effect for the nervous system. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I love that. So when you're, what are some common mistakes that you see people doing when they're, when they're breathing? Hmm. I can't really say I've seen many common mistakes. Um, yeah, that's a good question. I don't know. I don't think there are many mistakes. I guess <laughs> um, the only thing I could talk to is, so there's sort of two different um, branches within the breathwork community. There's breathwork healing, and then there's breathwork um, like practices or exercises. Would so, you call that like holotropic breath or? Yeah. So yeah. So my my app is more in the breathwork kind of practices or exercises where um, um, yeah, there's different techniques. Obviously, there's there's traditions that these techniques come from. Um, and, and it's more kind of a self-exploratory thing where you're, you're just spending time with your breath and you're doing these different practices to kind of exercise those muscles that are involved in respiration. And then there's breathwork healing where you're doing, yeah, like you said, more holotropic breathing. It's a more intense kind of practice and it's meant to take you into, um, more of like a healing modality where things are coming up and you're experiencing emotions and you're releasing traumas mm -hmm. and the breath is really powerful in that way. Um, that's not something that I do necessarily. Mm -hmm. Like I've done it, but it's not something that I, I you know, teach or have mm -hmm. much experience in. Mm -hmm. um, and I think any of the mistakes that I would see kind of come from people's inexperience with breathwork healing. Mm -hmm. um, so, and I think that's gotten really popular these days is people doing breathwork healing. Um, and I don't think, I think they're not, they're, they're maybe not approaching it in the right way or in a wise way. Like they're throwing people into it um, without them having any foundation in the more kind of foundational aspects of breathwork. Right. Like if someone's never spent a lot of time just breathing in and breathing out and controlling that and, you know, um, you know, practicing kind of um, the victorious breath or the kind of constriction at the back of the throat, which you do in yoga, which kind of sounds like you're fogging up a mirror, you know, the ujjayi. Um, 
if someone has no experience with this and they sort of get thrown into this like intense, like hyperventilation, I would say that's unwise. I don't think you should do that. Um, but it, it's become very popular. Um, and I think I understand why, um, you know, and it, and it is a very powerful thing. And if, if someone, if that's someone's experience and they have experienced healing with that, then that's great. But um, mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that that would be maybe the mistake is that they're perhaps um, going too deep too fast. Right. Yeah. 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 That's all really I would say. Respecting the, the healing, how powerful that it can be. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I would say I would say just just sort of approach it, you know, approach it respectfully and with caution mm -hmm. um, and try to form that foundation. That's um, good. Yeah. Yeah. And you were mentioning too earlier about just really like trusting yourself and like your own yeah. intuition. And if you feel like this is too much, then ease up. You can change positions. You can stop for a moment or you could keep going and see what happens too. If you want to explore some deeper parts of yourself that are going to present themselves, then yeah. 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 100%. Um, yeah. I'm, I'm really about like the, obviously beautiful thing about breath and about yoga is that um, it's something for you to experience. It's, it's right there <laughs> within you. It's right there. Your lungs are here and uh, all you have to do is spend some time with them and they'll teach you some things. All you have to do is spend, you know, 10 or 15 minutes breathing um, and see how you feel. There's no magic to it. Um, you know, the, the healing is, is within you. It's right there. Um, all you have to do is breathe deep um, and be with your body and just see what comes up, see what you experience. Um, yeah, I, I never, I never share anything that I haven't experienced myself. Um, so if I'm doing breathing with, with, you know, a group or, um, you know, I'll, I'll share what I, what I've experienced um, and what I know and what has worked for me. Um, but, e you know, I think each person has the medicine right there mm -hmm. in their lungs, you know, or, or in their in their own bodies. Um, and so I think that each person's sort of experience, um, their their own body is going to be their own best teacher. Right. Um, yeah. So mm -hmm. I, I like to encourage people to, yeah, maybe just not give too much direction. Like let, let mm -hmm. someone figure it out for themselves. Mm -hmm. um, and that's kind of part of the fun is starting that journey and just seeing what happens and seeing what you experience and seeing how you feel after doing certain exercises and, and hopefully letting that be your guide, like try some Kapala Bhati. Maybe it doesn't feel great. Maybe it's like, Oh, I don't know about that one. Or maybe you really like that one and just be intuitively led. Um, and yeah, that, I think that's the best way to go about it. Just see what resonates with you on whatever day and go for it. And that's sort of how I do it when I'm doing breathing on my own, um, my own breathwork practice in the morning. Um, it's like, what, what do I feel like doing? Do I feel like humming? Do I feel like doing some breath holding? Do I want to do more Kapalabhati? Or maybe I just want to do some basic breathing in and out for 20 minutes, you know? And your body, yeah, it's like, it's just your time. It's your time. And mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. for a lot of us, it's like just being, if we are living in anxiety or stress, just being in our culture and especially with what's going on, it's like we might be taking very shallow breaths and breathing in our yeah. chest and very removed from our body. So just, mm -hmm. I love that you're providing sort of a, a guide. It's like, here it is and do whatever feels you're called to. But yeah. like, here are some examples of solutions that have worked for you and have worked for people around. So, yeah, mm -hmm. it's really, I think, so, so helpful. And just to, mm -hmm. I love that you're doing your lives on Instagram. Yeah. Um, that's how I found you. And just really doing it together and co creating community around the breath. Yeah. Yeah, no, for sure. It's... That we all have that in common, right? It's like, and we can all, and just to have an opportunity to just really get quiet yeah and and heal like spirit yeah. mind body this is incredibly inclusive to heal everything 
mm-hmm. in, in whatever you're wanting to look at, whether it's just getting grounded or to go deeper and to do some real, like, real, yeah. like, digging deep work. So, mm-hmm. um, yeah. ask you, what was the longest that you've ever bre- uh, breathed for? <laughs> um, well, the first, so the app was released in the fall, mm-hmm. and I wanted to do um, sort of like a launch thing, a launch okay. I guess it was a launch party, but it was more of a launch workshop. And so we did that at One Yoga with a great teacher, Carolyn Ann Budgel, who was was super gracious to join me for that. Um, and she is like a, you know, a breathing expert, a meditation expert. Yeah. And um, yeah, we, that was probably about two hours where we did breath work. Um, and I, I, you know, explained some things about some of the philosophy and then some of the physiology involved in breathing. Um, yeah, we, we breathe together for, I mean, at least an hour and 45 minutes, two hours. Um, Amazing. Yeah, so that was probably the longest group thing that I've ever done. Um, it's so powerful to breathe as a group. And when you hear everybody as well, it's like this collective. Yeah. yeah. Super yeah. fun. Did you guys have music or was it just listening to each other, the, the sound? Yeah, of so um, that was sort of one of the goals. or I mean, one of the goals of the, the app was to hopefully for teachers to be able to use it in their classes. Mm. Um, I I wanted teachers to be able to use it, but I also wanted it to be able to kind of facilitate um, a group breathing. So, um, so I did all the sound design on the app. So the app has tones that play when you're inhaling and exhaling. Um, So it's a really easy way for everybody to kind of sync up and breathe together, which is how we do it on the live. Um, so I'm running kind of the app at, on a simulation and, and we're breathing in and out with it that way. Mm-hmm. So when we did our event, um, yeah, we we did like, you know, 12 or yeah, 13 minutes, I think, where we were doing the longer nine second inhale, nine second exhale. And the app is providing the sound, the tone so that everybody knows when to breathe in and breathe out. Mm-hmm. And so it was really powerful because... Um, yeah, we're all breathing at the same time, right? Because, and you can hear everybody else breathing, but we're all sort of sinking our breath and we're sinking our heart rates and we're sinking our brain waves. And so after that time, there was like uh, a very palpable energy in the room, yeah. you know, where you could really feel everybody kind of buzzing at the same frequency in a way, which was really, really I unique. love that. It's like yeah, that, that was, <laughs> yeah, that was one of the goals that I had for that event was to see if we could create sort of this collective empathy in the room, Mm -hmm. you know, if if the breath could bring us to a place where we felt more connected. Um, Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, so that was really, really beautiful. Could we, could you share maybe like a 20 second uh, breathing exercise right now? Sure. Um, Let me see a few seconds here. And then we'll get it so going. How long did it take you to create this? Did you have this idea for a few years? Or are you just kind of like you because you were going to school learning how to develop apps and then Right. Your yeah. So yeah, no, exactly. Um, so yeah, I went to coding school here in the city um, and worked on like a couple projects. Um, but it was it was like going into going into school, um, one of my like the, the main reason I sort of wanted to get into it was to learn to do um, mobile app development. Um, but I ended up sort of learning more web development, which I think is the easier way to go, or it's a better foundation anyway. So building websites and building web apps, um, but always kind of in the back of my mind was like, I want to build, I want to build something mobile, like for mobile. Um, and yeah, then this, this sort of idea came along or this project came into my life where I was like, I want to build something like this. I want to build this breathing app. Um, And so it was probably about a year um, from when I first sort of started working on it and had the first, like, you know, initial idea and kind of forming all of that. And then, you know, things like this, it moves in fits and starts. So you kind of work on it for a while and then you get busy with other stuff and then you work on it for a while. Um, so yeah, it was, it was roughly a year from when I first started to actually releasing it. Amazing. Um, yeah. Okay. Let me see if this is no was... accident. So it was all meant to be. <laughs> okay. We're okay. okay can you hear that? Let me just turn off the Bluetooth. Um, so hopefully I was like 
crazy glare, but you can maybe see that a little bit. Um, this is what yeah, the app. Yeah, a little bit. It's sort of pause. Yeah, you can see that. Yeah, so um, this is what you see when you first come to. It's probably backwards, but it says, "Welcome to just breathing." Now take a deep breath, and then at the bottom it says, "Push to start breathing." You push that, and then it goes right into kind of the first breathing exercise, um, which is um, a five-second inhale, five-second exhale. Um, and so maybe we'll just do like a minute or two of breathing together. Yeah. Um, so you can kind of hear the sound. And yeah, this there's like something that goes around the outside that sort of tells you to breathe in and the ball gets bigger and then breathe out and the ball gets smaller. So you breathe in for five. Okay, so that's been a minute and 30 seconds. Amazing. It goes quick. Uh, it's like time just doesn't exist when yeah. you get to that state. It's like that flow sure. state of just, yeah, mm -hmm. really, really connects you and get to get grounded. That's amazing. Thank you so yeah. much for sharing that. So what would be the best way for people who are interested to get in contact with you? And Yeah, uh, follow on Instagram. Uh, it's just breathing, all one word, dot breathwork. So just breathing breathwork. Um, you can, yeah, message me there or get in touch with me there. That's probably the quickest, easiest way. Um, if you want to download the app on the app store, um, it just go to the app store and type in just breathing, um, and it'll come up. Um, and yeah, those are probably the best two ways. And you seem to be doing lives. Um, yeah. Every day at 10 a.m. Every right. day at 10 a.m. Instagram live. Great. I know. I, I'm, well, we're going to read together Thursday. Yeah. Yeah, so um, obviously we'll be letting everybody know about that. Uh, ah, I'm super excited. It's it's really, really great. Just like to, to have people like breathing together in that way. Um, so if you want to, if you're just approaching breathwork and, and sort of want to see what it's all about, yeah, you can join on live, even if you come for a couple deep breaths. I think that's mm -hmm. more than enough for most people. So yeah, please, please get involved <laughs> and join the breath breath work revolution um i just think it's really powerful it's really powerful and it, and it works um and it's something that you can do anywhere anytime so please okay. just yeah thank you so much matthew for for joining me today and oh, uh, thank you so much for having thank me you. <laughs>